Good Sunday afternoon, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another Southern Oregon Weather Weekend Update. As usual, we'll start with a review of our current conditions, jump into our seven-day forecast, and then we'll talk about what our teleconnections are telling us for the extended forecast. So first, here's the current NOAA satellite image from the GOES West satellite. Uh, largely clear skies over the southern half of the state. Some clouds over the Willamette Valley in Washington, probably just because of the, the northwest flow that we've been under over the past few days. This has led to some pleasant breezy conditions in the afternoon and, it, and has really kept temperatures down. You've probably noticed some haze over the Rogue Valley and, and the Illinois Valley over the last several days, and maybe you've seen the news stories talking about the fires in Siberia. The uh, upper-level winds have just been favorable for that smoke to be transported all the way across the Pacific Ocean, and so that's been the, the source of some of our haze over the last few days. Now, over the last week, it's been relatively dry. We did see some showers over the higher terrain last weekend, mainly along and north of the Umco Divide, but for the Rogue Valley and Southwest Oregon as a whole, it's been largely dry. However, it's been quite cool as well. Uh, we've been under this cool northwest flow pattern with a ridge sitting off to our west um, and, and then another ridge building over the central part of the U.S. and the Great Lakes. But we've been under, under the influence of a trough for the last week or so. And that's led to cooler than normal temperatures, something that uh, I can't really remember happening over the last uh, few years. Uh, although last summer did have some cooler periods like this as well. And I think this is a pattern that is at least going to continue for uh, for a little little while. There are some signs that heat could possibly build uh, later in July and into August, but we'll talk about that. So here's our current 500 millibar geopotential height map. Uh, here's our trough that's been giving us cooler than average conditions. Here's the ridge that's been plaguing the central part of the United States and the Great Lakes, leading to some heat in that part of the country. And this lines up very well with MJO phase one. You can see right now we're kind of on the border between phases one and two. Uh, you can also see that the oceans are in a La Nina-like state. We're not officially in La Nina territory because Enzo region 3.4 uh, hasn't cooled below NOAA's official threshold for a La Nina uh, for a specified period of time. But still, there's a, a La Nina-like signature with cooler than average conditions uh, here along the equator. And if we combine those two things, MJO phase one with a La Nina type state, the atmosphere, we get this correlation. See the trough over the west coast? That's ex exactly what we've been experiencing with some sort of ridging signal over the central part of the U.S. and the lakes. So that lines up very well with our current 500 millibar pattern. And you can see um, even out a couple of days, this pattern is going to persist through the first half of the week. Ridge is still over the lakes. Trough is still over the west. By the end of the week, though, um, this ridge shifts west a little bit, um, and and a, a trough tries to dig into the east. And that should provide maybe some relief from the heat for a little while. And you can see our, our trough uh, shifts a little bit farther to the north. This is not going to mean intense heat for us, but and we will see uh, a return to average temperatures and, and probably a couple degrees above average as well. Nothing extreme, but highs into the low 90s, possibly versus the low 80s. There are a couple reasons why it's going to get a little bit warmer later this week. The first is that the MJO is supposed to slowly work its way into phase two, according to the European model. And phase two here in July, with again a La Nina like state and negative Enzo. That's associated with some ridging of our area. You can see um, not only is the ridge still parked over the, the northern plains, but, but it, it kind of extends back 
toward the west coast. And that's very similar to the 500 millibar forecast here from the European Ensemble. See, we still have the ridge over the northern plains, but it's also extending back toward the west coast. So once again, interesting to see how the MGO influences our weather. Another reason why it is probably going to warm up later this week is because the PNA here, the Pacific North American Index, is forecast to rise. And usually, uh, at, at nearly all times of the year, a drop in the PNA is a signal for troughing over the west coast, and a rise in the PNA is a signal for, for either weaker troughing or ridging if, it, if the PNA goes positive. And, and you can see the spike here in just a couple of days. That's going to contribute to some warmer conditions as well. Also, uh, we've talked in the past about the Southern Oscillation Index and how a strongly negative SOI can lead to heat. Uh, that's what gave us some pretty warm temperatures at uh, it, during the third week of June. And here about 18 days ago, we had another big drop. And that's about the period of time that it takes for, for these SOI drops or spikes to influence our weather, 18 days. So if we extend that out, this happened on the, uh, on the 30th of June. So if we extend that out 18 days, that gives us a target for July 8th. And that uh, lines up very well with um, the, the 500 millibar forecast from the European Ensemble. And here's all that information shown once again by the Weather Channel 10-day forecast. So you can see here we start out pretty cool with partly cloudy conditions. That's because we're still going to be under the influence of that trough during the first part of the week. But as the MJO works into phase two, um, and, and as that SOI drop from two weeks ago starts to kick in, here we get warmer toward the end of the week. Now, there are a couple of reasons why I think we're not going to go into an extended period of hot temperatures. The first is that here you can see the PNA comes right back down. So at most, I think we could have a couple days in the low 90s and then, and then maybe drop back down to the upper 80s. Another reason is that after this SOI drop two and a half weeks ago, the SOI has been neutral to pretty positive over the last two weeks. So that's a signal for average to cooler than average conditions, not heat. Also, we have the angular momentum, basically uh, the, the speed of the, the jet stream, global wind speeds. That's forecast to remain negative. And that's also a signal for cool uh, to average conditions, not heat. And here you can see um, by day 10, this trough has uh, pushed down into our area once again. The ridge is back over the central part of the United States, and that lines up very well with what our teleconnections are pointing toward. In fact, uh, the, some of the ensembles, like the Canadian ensemble here, have gotten stronger with this troughing trend um, by day 15. You can see they, they want to build the ridge further offshore. Uh, they, they want to build the ridge more strongly over the lakes and the Hudson Bay area, and they want to keep that trough over the western part of the United States. Now, if we're looking out farther into the summer, the end of the month into August, there's some signs that we could see a period of warmer than average temperatures for, for a while, uh, maybe a couple of weeks. And there are a few reasons for this. One of them is a key analog for this year, July 2005. We've talked about analogs in the past. They're basically years that have evolved similarly to the present year, have the same atmospheric drivers, same, same sea surface temperature patterns. Forecasters look at these analog years and, and, and try to figure out, okay, what happened in those years and could something similar happen in, in the present year? Well, one of the years where the sea surface temperature pattern was very similar to this year's 2005. You can see the warm water north of Hawaii and in the Gulf of Alaska, some cooling over by the uh, coast of South America, Peru, Ecuador, and, and some largely neutral temperatures in the Enzo regions here. 
That lines up reasonably well with our current sea surface temperatures. Here are the warm water north of Hawaii and near the Gulf of Alaska, but cooler farther to the east, right along the Pacific coast. Here's our cooler water off the coast of South America, a little bit more neutral in the, the key Enza regions, Enzo 3.4. Uh, we also have this warm water uh, forming kind of a horseshoe pattern along the east coast and, and through the Caribbean. That's also somewhat similar to what we observed in 2005. So there, there are similarities here. And what ended up happening in 2005 is that it did get warm over the west coast uh, later into July and August. The ridge over the east didn't really move, but we had some warmth um, along the west coast. And I, one of the reasons for that is probably because the MJO started out in phases one and two early in July, just like it is right now, but then it worked its way over into phases four and five and even into six before it looped back into the, null, into the null phase here. So that gives us a clue. Um, some of these phases, especially phase five and, and phase six, they're warmer phases. Uh, phase six especially is highly correlated with warmth of the west coast, and there's a fair amount of skill with this correlation. So if the MJO breaks out of phases one, two, and three, kind of the phases that we've been moving around in over the past couple weeks and if it gets into into these higher phases especially phase six we could see some warmth and in fact you have some models like the european monthlies trying to take the mjo in that direction will it make it all the way into the warmest phases like phase six i'm not sure uh, but we do have some hints that that later down the road um, maybe later into august we could see some above normal temperatures for a, a longer period of time so let's summarize all that information. We do have a gradual warming trend through the week, uh, but again, no extreme heat, uh, especially not right now. The The heat is, is going to be transient. We had an SOI drop last month. The effects of that are kicking in, but then we have these other atmospheric drivers taking over that point toward cooler than average to, to average conditions for most of July. We have our negative angular momentum. We have the SOI going positive. We have the PNA kind of staying negative, and we have cool Enzo regions. Not an official La Nina yet, but a La Nina type signature. Um, all this alphabet soup um, kind of decreases the risk of above normal temperatures for July. We, we do have some hints that we could see some heat maybe late in July or, or even in August. Not quite sure about the timing, but, but 2005 was a year that evolved somewhat similarly to this one. The sea surface temperature patterns looked a little bit similar and and in 2005 we did have some heat late in July or August. Probably because the MJO moved into those warmer phases, especially phase six. Again, not seeing any clear signals yet, but I'll continue to monitor the MJO over the next couple weeks, continue to look at our, our teleconnections and see where things will head. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to set your notifications for the next weekend update. Uh, once again, if, if we start seeing impacts from smoke, I will probably post a little bit more often. But hopefully uh, these, these cooler than average conditions will continue to mitigate fire risks. So please leave a like if you enjoyed the forecast and uh, write a comment as well.